53 matter that's on the, the commission's agenda that involves Mr. Travis Runkle. I believe Mr. Runkle is present on the front row. This is docket number 12.40-231141A. My name is Richard Merle. I'm the administrative judge assigned by the Secretary of State to sit with this commission to preside over this particular hearing. Uh, there are some matters that we'll address uh, initially. Uh, I want you to know more about my role. I will make uh, rulings regarding the order of the proceedings, the admissibility of evidence, any questions of law uh, under the authority that's granted by me under the Tennessee Administrative Procedures Act. However, I will not participate in determining the findings of fact or the conclusions of law or the ultimate decision of this commission. Those decisions will be made. And I'll ask the executive director to call on the members that are present in the forum for this proceeding. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, Commissioner Beverly. Here. Commissioner Birchfield, Commissioner Carter, Commissioner Cherry, Commissioner Green, Here. Commissioner Halsey, Commissioner Isbell, Present. Commissioner Jackson, Here. Commissioner Russell, Commissioner Spangler, Here. Commissioner Wagoner, Here. Commissioner Wright, Here. Vice Chair Faulkner, Chairman Parton. Here. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, board uh, Commissioners. During the time of this hearing is being conducted, uh, no discussion of the case should take place between the commission members, any witnesses, the attorneys, or other persons, uh, unless all of the parties are present. The commission sits uh, in a similar position to a jury, must consider only evidence that's introduced at the hearing in reaching your decision. The Tennessee Open Meetings or Sunshine that all of the commission's uh, discussions and deliberations be in public and before all of the parties. Failure to observe this may result in the commission's action being reversed or remanded if appealed. You may not use any electronic devices or media such as a smartphone, computer, or internet service, text or instant messaging log, etc., uh, to communicate any information to anyone or to information or to conduct research about this case or anything. In that regard, uh, if uh, any of the commission members has received knowledge uh, about this case, the underlying facts or uh, information that uh, would compromise your ability to be fair and impartial in the uh, proceeding must be disclosed. Director, have any conflicts or We'll just ask if there's any commissioners, as we do during our uh, standard meetings, uh, does anybody have any um, uh, disclosures for this particular matter in front of the commission? Uh, they do not, Your Honor. Very well. <clears throat> uh, counsel for the state, do you have the uh, notice of hearing and charges to disseminate to the uh, commission? I do, Your Honor. There should be a copy on um, the iPads that they've been previously provided, but I also have hard copies if you would like for me to pass those out instead. Copies are and prohibition of electronics is only to do that research or gain information that's uh, from an outside source. The uh, notice of hearing and charges, of course, is part of the technical record uh, in this matter. The technical record is also comprised of a couple of continuance orders, but no other uh, filings at this point. 
Uh, Mr. Runkle, or do you agree that that is the uh, extent of the technical? I do. Aside from the uh, notice of witness um, and exhibits, yes, sir. Of, uh, was a listing required to disclose what witness what exhibits? There was one filed by the department. I don't believe that Mr. Runkle filed one. Uh, during the last several days, I assumed responsibility for this hearing. There were some email communication that you were part of. Some of it uh, uh, was the transmission of proposed exhibits, of which there were 11. Uh, I engaged in that uh, email string and asked if there were any objections. I didn't get any response from you, so at this time I'm going to ask if there are any objections to the proposed exhibits. And uh, for purposes of hearing, we'll consider of the 11 exhibits proposed by the state as a position. Already been pre numbered uh, and may be shared with the commission at the appropriate time in the proceeding. the uh, frustration rule. Those exhibits are there. There is, if I may. Um, I first wanted to introduce Ms. Cameron Bowers to the commission. She's going to be helping me today, and I greatly appreciate her assistance. Um, I know that you all haven't met with her before. I'll out later. Um, I have some preliminary matters uh, that I'd like to go ahead and read the record of questions with Ms. Following stipulation that Mr. Rung. Uncle, you've heard the description of those relations. Those and they'll be accepted as evidence in this. I would also, at this point, um, based on those stipulations, go ahead and move into evidence. Um, those official exhibit is. Electronic version of our uh, office is paperless at this point, uh, but you may, uh, you know, circulate to the uh, commissioner's paper copies of them. Gregory may have said. Were they? Are they identified as I change them with the exhibit numbers? A. Exhibit one, exhibit six, this, uh, all right. Uh, Prior to the email. that uh, all of those exhibits were presented. 
I have renamed them for purposes of the record uh, by inserting prior to the caption that uh, uh, the state had provided exhibit one or EX one through EX 11. Uh, so when they identify uh, you know, a document, they'll tell you the name that follows that EX. Uh, she'll, uh, she's identified this first one as exhibit six. So if you look at exhibit six, the balance of that name uh, should match uh, the, you know, the uh, description of what's in that exhibit. And you can, uh, Correct. Uh, so when she look at that, have any difficulty locating? All the preliminary map. Unless there is any. Questions? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, as Ms. Cooper um, introduced me, my name is Cameron Bowers and I represent the Department of Commerce and Insurance in this matter. The matter before you today is about a former Tennessee Highway Patrol trooper who has shown a disturbing lack of integrity and an egregious disregard for the Tennessee State Troopers Creed. The proof today will show that the respondent, Mr. Travis Runkle, was hired by the Tennessee Highway Patrol on January 29th of 2017. He then obtained his post certification on June 30th of 2017. A short time later, in November of 2018, Mr. Runkle was involved in an altercation at a bar in Memphis that necessitated a response from the Memphis Police Department. The proof will show that after investigation of this incident, Mr. Runkle was suspended for a period of 30 days in the fall of 2019. The proof will show that less than a year after serving this 30-day suspension, Mr. Runkle again engaged in behavior that demonstrated his lack of integrity, disregard for department policy, and a disregard for the laws of the state of Tennessee. The proof will show that in October of 2020, Mr. Runkle posted a video on social media that implied drug use. Further, Mr. Runkle posted a video on social media in November of 2020 that depicted a female using marijuana in his presence. Also in November of 2020, Mr. Runkle posted another photo on social media while he was on duty that revealed an, up an upcoming assignment to an upcoming presidential debate. The proof will show that during investigation of the 2020 incidents, Mr. Runkle repeatedly denied any illegal drug use while employed by the Tennessee Highway Patrol. However, later in his interview, he admitted to using marijuana at least three times in the eight months preceding the investigation. The proof will show that as a result of these actions, Mr. Runkle was terminated from his position with the Tennessee Highway Patrol in February of 2021. The proof will show that though Mr. Runkle was only employed by the Tennessee Highway Patrol for four years, he engaged in multiple violations of the general orders of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security and engaged in multiple violations of the laws of the state of Tennessee. Thank you. Wish to make an opening statement. Good morning, uh, commissioners. Thank you all for your time. Um, I don't deny anything that I've done. I take full responsibility and account accountability for my actions. Uh, I'm asking the post uh, this morning for forgiveness and mercy to allow me to keep my post at all possible.
whole truth and tell it please Stilo, how are you employed? How long have you been employed in that role? I'll re-ask. Lieutenant Stilo, how are you employed? I um, am with the Office of Professional Accountability with the Department of Safety and Homeland Security and have been there since 2013 as a sergeant and lieutenant. What are your job duties? I oversee five sergeants that are also assigned to the unit and we conduct and handle all the administrative investigations for the department. In that role, are there department policies that you investigate violations of or alleged violations of? What are those? How are they uh, referred to? They're our general orders. Uh, you know, that's that's basically how we operate as our department. As our policies and procedures are all referred to as general orders. Can you briefly describe the content of those general orders? Uh, the general orders will basically describe exactly how you operate in this year and function as a departmental employee, whether that's troopers, DL examiners, Homeland Security agents, or anything. It's all of our rules, regulations, policies for behavior, conduct, performance, everything is contained within those. And would a Tennessee Highway Patrol trooper have to acknowledge those general orders prior to beginning employment? Yes, ma'am, I think they um, are required to sign all the general orders prior to leaving the academy. Um, it's, it's what I believe is, is currently how that's off. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Honor, the document I handed to the witness has been previously marked as exhibits five and four and five, I believe. Take the name you're CeeLo, do you recognize the document I've just handed to you? I do. And what is it? Looks like a printout from our uh, our general orders are, are on a website called Power DMS. It's already contained electronically. So this looks like a, a printout from that website that shows our general orders and where we read and sign them. Is that a true and accurate copy of the general orders acknowledgement? Yes. And are those general orders acknowledgement um, by Mr. Travis Runkle? So it shows the date and time that he would have read and signed them. Your Honor, um, I'd like to move this document as a collective exhibit. It's exhibits four and five. They've all, they're all admitted. Uh, so your reference to them is, uh, is Mr. Lieutenant Stilo, are you familiar with the respondent, Mr. Travis Runkle? I am just based on um, his cases coming through our office since I've been employed there. And is that how you first became familiar of him? Do you remember about the time frame you first became familiar with him? I don't, I don't exactly remember the exact time frame um, regarding some of his disciplinary actions that first started office, but the first significant one, you know, would have been about that 2018, 2019. And what came before you in that time frame? The significant one was a 30-day a suspension that he received from 
September 9th, 2019 to the close of business on October the 18th of 2019 when he was, he had some incidents at bars in the Memphis area, um, off duty at the time. He was kicked out of two of these bars on, on separate occasions uh, after consuming alcohol at, uh, at each event. Um, and one of the uh, incidents, he had his THP issued weapon in the car while he was consuming alcohol. He also identified himself as a Tennessee state trooper during these incidents where he was having interactions with the Memphis Police Department. And on one of them, when he was uh, kicked out of the, I believe it was the Electric Cowboy, um, he uh, struck an uh, Asian male while in the parking lot um, and then told the Memphis Police Department officer that he had, had been drinking, but that would, he was not going to drive home after the event. But then as soon as the officer left, he went ahead and drove home on both occasions. So based on all those, and uh, in addition to that, he also failed to report these incidents to his chain of command, um, which is a requirement for our troopers. Any interaction you have with other law enforcement, you have to immediately report. This information learned during the course of an investigation? It was. It was a uh, case number for this uh, investigation was AD 20190160. And is there a summary report prepared in the course of these investigations? Ma'am, it's, um, we call it a, a summation of, of facts. So that's basically just our our total uh, summary of the entire incident, it's a summation. I have an objection. What was the basis of your uh, in regards to that investigation, I was not kicked out of the bar. I left voluntarily, and I did not have my THP weapon on me. Those are not objections to the, uh, uh, you know, the document or the testimony. Uh, that can come in when you make your proof. You can offer your testimony. Those assertions. Objection would to the document. What collection of record that exists. already said you have no objection to the exhibit so they've all been admitted correct they disagree with the information but accurate representation of actual record that exists buttons as so I did accept the exhibits that's correct if you want to challenge some of the content of it you can do so in your case in chief all right Lieutenant Stilo, can you remind me when those events occurred that you mentioned earlier? Looks like the initial incident happened in November of 2018. The report date um, of the summary report, would that have been at the conclusion of the investigation? Which, which? Um, the report states 2019. Would that be when? Yeah, that would have been when, it, when our office was finished with it. Okay, but yeah. the investigations took place, or I'm sorry, the actions took place in November 2018. Okay. I'd make sure your. Okay, yes. And did Mr. Runkle's actions in November of 2018 violate the general orders that we discussed earlier? 
Yes, they did. How so? In any uh, number of ways, um, when you look at the um, disciplinary action, it lists the uh, general orders violated at the end of the um, document and um, anything from violation of rules, which is, you know, that they're going to, um, employees shall not commit any act or fail to perform any act, which is constitute a violation of the policies and procedures which he signed. Uh, he violated that in numerous ways by uh, the actions of being untruthful with the Memphis Police Department officer um, by striking an individual uh, while under the influence of alcohol in the parking lot. By uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, he was also at these events with three friends who all had um, warrants out of the state of Arkansas. So these are all violations within within our policies and unbecoming conduct as well by identifying himself as a Tennessee State Trooper while performing these acts while he's out, uh, you know, friends and aged in these types of. I think you may have already said, but what was the result of the investigation in 2019? That's suspended for 30 days. Are you familiar when Mr. with generally when Mr. Runkle became post certified? Um, I, no, I don't, I guess whenever he was hired, which I guess maybe a couple a year or two before. Connor, this. can I refresh the Related hired and when he was uh, post-certified, so it's already part of the record. CLO, um, if he was certified in 2017, does that sound about right? I would say yes. And in your experience, is it common for a trooper to face disciplinary actions so soon in their career? Absolutely not, especially not when this severe. I mean, we rarely see suspensions of, of 30 days. I've been there, like I said, for almost 10 years. I could think of maybe one other 30 day suspension in the department. Maybe during that time and then that this is not a uh, normal occurrence. Definitely not normal to happen so quickly after being employed. Other question? Questions for that you need your opportunity questions I have a question for you're wanting to Express your own thoughts about the content. That's part of your case in chief, and that will come at the uh, end of state's proof. They have the burden of proof, so they're going first, and then you can present evidence. But right now, it's your opportunity to ask this witness questions. I know you're sitting close to the uh, uh, court reporter, but it would be helpful for the commissioners if you make sure that that microphone is on. You see the little red thing? Thank you. Okay. Is that better, everybody? Yes. All right. Do I need to rephrase my question? All right. All right, Lieutenant, I'm trying to see where in the report it specifically states that I was kicked out of the bar that night and that I had my Tennessee State uh, due to weapon right, If you'll look at the section number under, under your statement, which would be page three.
And un under your statement, you say that you had your teach piece, you'd fire them in your vehicle. You said that's on page three. That's on, that's on page three of the of the donation. Because I did have my off-duty weapon in the vehicle, but it was not my THP firearm. So that's why I'm trying to I'm trying to find it in the uh, report here. I'm not sure if that's which weapon you're referring to, but we we the state provides troopers with off-duty weapons as well. So I don't know what you're referring to. I'm referring to a weapon the state did not provide me with. It was an off-duty. It was a weapon that I had for personal, but it was n nothing that the state. I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that in this one, it just says that you had your weapon in your, in your car while you were drinking. So, uh, okay. if that was something that you wanted to clarify at the time, you probably should have said that during your interview with, uh, investigators. Okay. But I'm just trying to clarify. It was not my THP duty weapon. Honestly, sir, I have no idea which duty weapon you had on you or not. I wasn't there. Right. But that is what you said though. Again, let me say that as far as the report goes, the indication was during our summary and in our interview that it was your issued weapon. If you're arguing that fact, that's fine. I just, I have no way of knowing what you had on. I would say that the impression that you gave at the time of your interview was that it was your issued weapon. Okay. And also I was trying to see where... Making remarkable progress and asking questions because he got a response that he was uh, looking for. So we'll. Uh, Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was also trying to see in the statement where it specifically said I was kicked out of the bar because I, I voluntarily left. The look. Um under officer david skinner's report it says triple trooper runkle and the group of friends he was with were kicked out of the electric cowboy that night is that still page three two. page two Okay, well, just to clarify, um, my friends were kicked out. Okay, I can't do that. You're, well, you can, yes, but at the appropriate time. Right now, this is your time to ask this witness questions. You'll have your opportunity to testify after you're placed under oath at that point in, in the proceedings. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Hello. Did the respondent have a weapon in his vehicle? Did. And had he been drinking? No further questions, Your Honor. Do uh, any of the members have questions for the uh, witness? Right hand. Full truth and hold your hands, state your name and Captain Chris Ray with the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security's Office of Professional Accountability. The last my last name is Ray and that's spelled R A Y. It was after 12. Good afternoon, Captain Ray. Um, can you tell the commission members where you work, sir? Yes, I work. Um, I oversee the Office of Professional Accountability for the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, uh, the daily operations of the in internal investigations, administrative uh, processes for disciplinary actions for the department. 
And how did you become aware of the respondent, Mr. Travis Runkle? I became aware of the initial investigation. Uh, Mr. Runkle had two disciplinary actions during his employment with our agency. The first one was the one that Lieutenant Stilo just testified about. The second one was the case that I'm here testifying about. So um, 2019, uh, when, when the first case was brought up. And you said that you um, became personally involved, however, with the investigation into this incident, correct? Yes. Okay. And can you tell the commission members kind of the background and how you became involved? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so in January of 2021, our department was uh, notified by a Memphis media uh, member uh, that she had been uh, forwarded some information regarding uh, Trooper Runkle's social media postings. Uh, those uh, postings were forwarded to the department. Uh, and at that time, an internal investigation was initiated. And who else was working with you on that investigation? Sergeant Toby Carter. Okay. And um, at some point, did you have an interview with Mr. Runkle? Yes. Okay. And why did you move to have an interview with Mr. Runkle? What sorts of things were you investigating? Part of the allegation, or the allegations were that uh, Mr. Runkle's off-duty conduct, um, he was, uh, the social media posts were involving a young lady that was believed to be his girlfriend, uh, living girlfriend at the time, uh, and the activity in the social media post uh, were negative, uh, were a negative reflection on the department, appeared to be uh, associated to drug usage, uh, and um, he was interviewed based on the information we were provided. As a result of that investigation and then the interview, did you, um, or along with Sergeant Carter, compile a, um, a report uh, regarding the investigation and the outcome of that investigation. Yes, Sergeant Carter was the primary investigator. I, I assisted him with his interview of Mr. Runkle, um, and Sergeant Carter completed the case summary for the investigation. Um, part of your preparation for the hearing today, have you gone back and reviewed that document? Yes. Do you have a copy with you here today? Yes. Okay. And um, at this time, I'm Is that document that we're talking about, sir? Yes. Okay, thank you. Prior, <clears throat> excuse me. Prior to your interview with um, then Trooper Runkle, um, what other steps or um, findings did you um, have in preparation for that interview? Okay, so initially when the department was made aware of this activity, alleged activity and the information we've been provided uh, by digital evidence of the, of the videos and photographs, um, uh, Mr. Runko was sent for a, a probable cause or reasonable suspicion drug screen, uh, which uh, the results of that test came back negative for any drugs or narcotics. Um, so he was placed in a discretionary leave status pending that uh, reasonable suspicion drug screen. Once that came back, then the interview was scheduled uh, relatively soon after that. And do you remember the date of that interview? It was on January 15th, 2021. And was a recording of that interview um, made? Yes. Okay. And have previously to this hearing, have you provided that to um, the department? Yes. Okay. And um, Your Honor, if I may, I've got to stick back in.
recording. Of play it here. As the court reporter can hear. My name is Sergeant Toby Carter. We're here um, with Trooper Ronco, who is a subject of an internal investigation. Um, the uh, case number is AD 202100. To affect the volume. Yes. Sergeant Carter, myself, and Mr. Ronco. He was basically he was notified um, to be in our office. His his local leadership at the Memphis District would have notified him to report to our office for the interview. So I don't recall if that was the day before or a couple of days before, but he would he would have had prior notice to report to our office for. Uh, and invest in an in internal uh, affairs interview. And there were um... yes. 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 We're having trouble hearing you. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Let me tell, tell us, um, Captain Ray, if you recognize these okay. voices. Um, and the selfies uh, that you posted in on social media, when you post that selfie, is there captions with them? Sometimes. Have you ever posted on social media um, your work schedule or your potential work schedule? Not that I can remember. Pause that. Yes, sir. And get the answer to your question. Can you identify the voices? Yes. Who was speaking there? Sergeant Carter was asking uh, uh, Mr. Runkle a question about the social media post. And were you present for that interview? Yes. Again, to clarify. Um, and the second voice that we hear there, who is that? Mr. Runkle. And you heard, um, I believe it was Sergeant Carter asking about selfies and work schedule or captions, I'm sorry, on those selfies. Uh, why was that important at this point of the interview? We've been asked that question because one of the social media posts was a photo of him sitting in his patrol car in uniform uh, with the caption of, I'll be working the presidential debate uh, tomorrow night. Um, and I believe it said Trump 20. 16 or no trump 2020 um captain ray if you if i might i'm gonna go ahead and play um that portion of the interview no. did you uh get a special assignment uh, recently to work the presidential debate in nashville i came up here one day with the strike team so i would say yes i mean i, I wasn't on the strike team but i came up here uh one of the days to be out here with him because we're in Memphis working gradually. So uh, you were told to come out here, you did. And was that for the presidential debate yeah. in Nashville? Yes, sir. And did you post anything on social media about that? I believe so. I did on Snapchat. What did you post? Just kind of where I was. Uh, I think we walked outside and I just posted something of like downtown Nashville. Did you post a selfie of yourself in uniform with a caption? I don't recall. No Possibly. Problem. I'm going to show you a picture, all right? Okay. 
Now, at that point, Captain Ray, um, I believe it was Sergeant Carter states, I'm going to show you a picture. What was he showing um, Mr. Runkle? The, the photo of the selfie that Mr. Runkle took and posted to social media. Um, and did you provide a copy of that or is that a copy of that picture in the um, report that you've previously indicated you've got there in front of you? Yes. Um, and could you tell me um, what that, it, well, if I may <laughs> direct under the permission, it would be on your Captain Ray, if you could show um, the members of the commission your color photo, just so that we're all sure we're looking at the same same document there. Photograph that's being displayed by the uh, witness. And um, so Mr. Runkle was asked about that photo, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to pick up there in the video, audio. Can you see that? Yeah. Do I need to move closer? No, I see okay. Is that you? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I did post that. You did post that? Yes, sir. Are you sitting in your uh, assigned uh, trooper unit? Yes, sir. Your vehicle? Yeah, I'm in my patrol vehicle. Are you working? Yes, sir. Okay. So you have posted, you're working, you've posted on your personal social media while you're in uniform and you are giving your work location. Yes, sir. Um, in Nashville, it's a debate, so. yes, sir. Do you see a problem with that? Yes, sir. So why would, did you have permission to post that picture? No, sir. When we post or want to post pictures of ourselves in uniform or any department uh, insignia or, or in intellectual property, what do we have to have? Permission. Did you have permission to post that? No, sir. Okay, so let's go one step beyond that. Do you see that the current, do you understand the current climate in this country um, against law enforcement? So do you see how you posting that potentially put yourself and those with you at danger? Yeah, it would be targeted. Very easily, because they now know what you look like, your uniform, and where you are. And they can very easily find out the date, the location, and the time of the presidential debate in Nashville. Everybody in the world could. Yes, sir. It's on the news, so yes, sir. So you see how uh, some discretion should have been used in that? Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Ray, was there another photograph a few minutes later that became um, an issue regarding in that interview? Yes, there was a photograph of um, a beverage sitting on a table at a restaurant um, that Trooper Runkle, I believe, and another uh, member were uh, at a restaurant and he wasn't partaking in consuming a beverage, but that was a photograph that was posted on social media. And do you know who posted that photograph, sir? I believe it was his girlfriend at the time. And would that be on the next page of the report, the photograph that you produced for Mr. Runkle that, that day in the interview? I'm not sure if my folder is in order as, as the report that you um, have, but it, it's in here. Let me Oh, I have it. Okay. Yes. And if, if I may, if you could show. I believe that's 12 of the summary that the commission members have in front of them on the iPad. Um, did Mr. Runkle suffer any disciplinary um, consequences as a result of that photograph? That photograph was part of the investigation. It was part of the social media post that could potentially uh, attribute a negative reflection on the department. 
uh, that particular part of the uh, evidence that we had, uh, I wouldn't say that it played a substantial role in the disciplinary action that he received. Um, and then to the heart of the issue, Captain Ray, at some point did um, the interview switch to asking Mr. Runkel about any drug use? Yes. Um, and was the uh, his personal relationship part of that conversation? Yes. And why was that? Because the uh, two of the social media posts uh, that appeared to be uh, drug consumption related were um, also included, the video, videos included uh, his girlfriend at the time. And you did state that uh, Mr. Runkel took a drug test prior to um, this interview and it was negative, is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, but that you did ask him about drug use during the interview? Yes. I'm going to skip ahead to um, the next part of the interview regarding that that first question. Oh, marijuana. Um, you said 21, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22 for six years. That's correct. Have you been around people um, that have used illegal substances since you've been a Tennessee Highway Patrol member? Um, not that I can recall. Not that you can recall? I'm sure. So, if there's social media posts or videos of you um, with potential illegal substance use, they're not accurate? If there's a post, it, it's got to be accurate, but I don't recall. Uh, so, you've been a trooper for three years, and you can't recall if you've been around anybody doing illegal substances. Captain Ray, the voice switched there at that point. Whose voice is that that's breaking in now? That was me. Okay. That's a little hard for me to believe, Trooper. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, that, you, we're supposed to believe that. I don't recall. I can't remember. Three years you've been a Trooper, and you, you can't remember if you've been around anyone doing illegal drugs. I mean, maybe a couple times. Yeah, okay. So is it a yes or a no? It sounds like it's a yes to me, yes, not just a I can't remember or maybe. Yes, sir. Have you or have you not been around individuals doing illegal drugs since you've been a Tennessee State Trooper? I've seen a couple of times. A couple of times, all right. Uh, when was that? I don't remember. Who were those people? Um, honestly, <clears throat> friends of friends, um, really friends of my girlfriend. Captain Ray, did Mr. Um, Runkle at that time or later in the interview ever provide names or details um, regarding these friends of friends or people other than the girlfriend he was referring to? No. Did Mr. Runkle, um, did you then have cause to question Mr. Runkle about a um, Halloween post? Yes. Can you tell the commission about that, please? Yes, it was a social media post. Um, that basically the, the comment on it was, uh, I go hard on Halloween. And I'll have to look for that photograph. Is that a photograph, sir, or a um, short video? Would have been a video, Snapchat video, I believe. And as part of your investigation, were you able to obtain a copy of that short video? Yes. All right. And you questioned Mr. Runkle during the interview um, about this issue, correct? Yes. All right. And I'm going to hopefully. Doing a job. So about, I sent her home when I was fired her. So when it comes down to doing the job, I'm doing the job. But I, I see where you guys are coming from, but it doesn't look good at all. So, you know, I'm going to. All right. Did you go out? Uh, socially with your girlfriend for Halloween? Yes, sir. Did you go to a club or a bar? We went uh, downtown. Downtown Memphis? Yes, sir. Were there any social media posts of you and her that night? I believe so. Were there any that stick out in your mind? Uh, I don't recall. I'm sure you probably have a 
picture of something that you're referring to. Uh, I know we dressed up. You dressed up? Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna show you a video, all right? At that time, um, Captain Ray, play this short video for Mr. Uncle. Sergeant Carter, play the video, yes. the video that you played for cap before uh, mr runkle yes okay what was mr runkle's reaction to that he acknowledged that it uh, it probably did look bad uh for him in the department Um, Captain Ray, after that video was shown, did you have cause to question Mr. Uncle about a trip uh, with the young lady that was seen in that video? Yes. And could you tell the commission about that, please? Yes. Uh, the other video that was presented to the department was a video of uh, Mr. Runkle along with the same young lady who was his girlfriend at the time. Uh, and she appeared to be smoking a marijuana cigarette. And in that video, uh, she's seen blowing the smoke from uh, that cigarette into Trooper Mr. Runkle's face. He was asked about that. Um, I believe his uh, statement was that uh, they had made a trip to California. Uh, she had purchased marijuana at a marijuana, uh, legally purchased marijuana at a uh, retail outlet in California. Uh, she was smoked marijuana at that time, and when they got back to the hotel, that day he smoked marijuana in California. Did you present a video um, to Mr. Runkle regarding that trip? Yes. At the video that you were just describing, sir? Yes. Okay. Um, and the Caption says Bay comes to LA. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You said that initially, um, Mr. Runkle said that he did not um, smoke while on that trip. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And just for the record purposes, um, the the two videos um, are that were just played have been marked. Um, you continued your conversation with uh, Trooper Runkle regarding drug use uh, and his girlfriend regarding drug use. Is that correct? Yes. What was their living situation at the time, um, as Mr. Runkle described it to you? I believe they had been living together um, for my, less than a year. I don't recall exactly, but they were residing together. And at some point, did you ask him about whether or not... Um, this young lady had been smoking either with him or in the residence. Yes. Okay. Her smoking marijuana at the house. I find it hard to believe that she's never smoked marijuana in your residence. She has, I haven't been there. Okay. Has she? Like I said, if she does has, she does she business. normally smoke? How often does she smoke? Occasionally. What does that mean? At parties or with friends. Weekly? Maybe once or twice a week. Like I said, I try to stay away from it. I mean, and... 
I'm going to show you another picture from social media, okay? Let's see if you can identify this picture. Can you see that picture? Captain Ray, at this point, what picture are you, are you or uh, Captain Carter showing uh, Mr. Ray? Or Mr. Runkle, excuse me. I'm not sure at that point which photo Sergeant Carter showed Mr. Runkle. Yes. Okay. That'd be the next picture. You have a color copy of the photo there with you, sir? I do. And if you could show the commission members just again so that we're all on the same page. And is that the same young lady that was in these other videos um, that Mr. Runkle said was his girlfriend? Yes. And what does that caption say, sir? When your man, when your man's is a cop and you're so high, you can't even be normal. What was Mr. Runkle's reaction to that post, sir? I don't recall. Did Mr. Runkle at any time say he was going to end that relationship? I don't remember him saying he was going to end the relationship. Did you, sir, um, express at that point to Mr. Runkle how um, these posts, and probably not for the first time expressed to him, but expressed to him how these posts were problematic? Yes, I did. Um, and can you tell the commission a little bit about what you said to Mr. Runkle? I basically uh, told him that um, his conduct uh, reflected negatively on himself and uh, members of the highway patrol and every member of the agency that's ever worn the uniform. And uh, I conveyed to him strongly how uh, disrespectful it was, not only to uh, everyone else in the department, uh, but how uh, I felt disrespected as well uh, from his conduct. Did Mr. Runkle go on to um at least at that point, still deny smoking. Yes. All right. Part of that interview. I'm going to ask you again, um, and Captain Ray has already told you that it's most important at all times, but especially now, that you need to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Since you've been a member of the Tennessee Highway Patrol for the past three years, you said since 2017, have you used an illegal substance? No, sir. You have not smoked marijuana? No, sir. Did you smoke marijuana while you were in California? No, sir. You paused for about 10 seconds, just a second ago, to try to think if you had smoked marijuana or done any other illegal drugs since you've been a trooper. Um, why did you pause? Just trying to think of that, really. I mean, I've been on three years, so. But I, I, I did not smoke while I was in California. When's the last time you smoked marijuana? So it's been a while. I quit back around when I was 21, 22. And I'm glad I did. So at that point, as I asked a second ago, Mr. Runkle continues to deny drug use, correct? Correct. At some point, Captain Ray, did that change? Yes. And when did that change finally? It changed after I addressed uh, his denials with him again. Why did you do that? because I knew he was lying. And why did you th know he was lying? Just by his responses and the, the evidence that we had in front of us. So at some point, did Mr. Runkle change his story? You understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Can I make it any clearer? No, sir. Have you smoked marijuana, Trooper Runkle, or done any other illegal drugs since you've been employed with the Tennessee Highway Patrol? Yes, sir. Okay. I want to know when and where every time. And before you say I don't recall or I can't remember, you've been on three years, Trooper Runkle. That's not a long time at all. Sure. Okay? It's not long. Sergeant Carter's been on the department 20 years. I've been on 28 years, okay? Both of us can tell you right now, um, probably the last time we drank a beer, and if, if we had done illegal narcotics, I guarantee you we could tell you the last time we done it, where we were at, and who we were with. So right now, right here, tell us, Every time that you have smoked marijuana since you've been a state trooper, where you were at and who you were with. All right. I've uh, smoked several times, maybe two or three times with her uh, at parties. When? The last one be recently, probably a couple months ago. All right. So you said a couple, three times, but first you said several times. Two to three times. Two to three times is a couple to me. Several is like five, six, seven. So which is it? A couple? That's what I, that's several. What I meant. Several. Two to three. Two, two to three, three times. times. Yes, sir. Okay. Since I've been on. All right. And that's been within a couple of months. Yes, sir. Spe specify. October, November, December. Did you smoke in California? Uh, I would bet, I would probably bet my wife and one of my kids that you smoked in California simply because you were across the country. It's legal out there, legal yes, for to smoke marijuana out there. Um, so I, I'm betting that you probably smoked out there. Is that true? Yes, sir. That was the last time I smoked was out there. In November? Yes, sir. When was the other time? Two other times since we started dating, like I said, at, at parties. Can't recall what, where, you know, when, what parties, or like where, time frame. But we've been dating for eight months. So. So within the last eight months, you smoked marijuana with your girlfriend three times. Yes, sir. Okay. Captain Ray, did you ask Mr. Runkle if he could tell you whether there were any? Um illegal drugs in his home or his car? I did. And what was Mr. Runkle's response? He doesn't think so. As a result of that interview and the findings um, that you specified in this report that the commission members have in front of them, was any action taken regarding Mr. Runkle's employment? Yes, he was terminated. And for what reason? For his conduct. Okay. Um, do you know, sitting there today, what his last day of employment was with the Tennessee Highway Patrol? January 26th of 2021 is the date of termination. Thank you, sir. Uncle, do you have questions of this? I do not. Questions? Commissioners, does anybody have questions for the uh, witness? It appears there are none, Your Honor. Uncle, do you have witnesses at all or do you testify your 
I do not have any witnesses to call. Uh, I would like to say a few things in my defense. Right hand, please. Or affirm full truth in I do. State your name. Tell it, please. For First and last name. First name, Travis, T-R-A-V-I-S. Last name, Runkle, R-U-N-K-L-E. Since the almost two and a half years I've been terminated from the Highway Patrol, uh, I've changed, I've grown, I've learned, I've matured. I don't do social media anymore, any of it. I don't hang out with the previous group of friends that I used to hang out with. I don't go out. All I do is work and work out. Um, I, I live on my own now. I have my own apartment. I'm the only one on the lease. I've sold my Mustang. I got a Jeep. I've changed a lot in my life. Um, and I'm very deeply sorry for letting the state down and uh, bringing bad uh, reflection on the Highway Patrol. Um, and I wish I could take back my actions, but I can't. I just live with them and, and, and grow and learn from what I've done. Um, I've been through six jobs, five funerals in the past two and a half years. It hasn't been easy. Um, you can ask any uh, trooper sergeant, lieutenant, or captain in West Tennessee. They'll say I was a hard worker, I love my job. I made a difference anywhere I went. I was on every, just about every uh, saturation or task force there was because I was a hard worker. Anywhere I went, I did make a difference. Um, in Tipton County where, was my assigned county. Uh, there was a bad intersection, US 51 and Route Road. We had like three fatalities in one month at the same intersection. I took it upon myself. I contacted TDOT to see if there's anything we can do to to change that. And since I've been fired, uh, I've been told that there's a there's a light there. TDOT got in touch with me and started the project, and they've reworked the whole intersection to to help to hopefully change that. Uh, but that was that that project started basically at the time of this investigation. Uh, also, US 51, um, Mount Carmel Road, Tipton County. There was a bad curve at the end of the road. Uh, we had like four or five wrecks in one week. Everyone just ran off the road. They didn't see the curve. The last one was a uh, ambulance. Once again, I contacted TDOT to see if they could do anything about the road. And uh, they, they added more signage and uh, made the curve more aware, which reduced wrecks as well. Um, like I said, I'm just asking the commission for forgiveness and mercy to keep my post if at all possible. I'm not the same person I was. Uh, and like I said, if I could take back my actions, I would. And that's all. Uncle, you admit that you lied repeatedly during that interview, correct? Yes. You admit, and the commission has seen the multiple social media posts um, of you, including in uniform, acting contrary to the policies, the procedures, and the expected behavior of not just a Tennessee Highway Patrol officer, but law enforcement in general, correct? I don't, I don't deny anything I've done. And yet, all of those actions degraded and brought on to law enforcement across the state of Tennessee uh, scrutiny and um, unwanted and, and improper light that the rest of them didn't deserve, sir, correct? Uh, that's correct. At the time I was dating a, a female I shouldn't have dated and made some bad decisions. And like I said, I wish I could take those decisions back, but I can't and just live with them. And despite being around this female for months on end and seeing her drug use and partaking in it, in it yourself, you still believe that this commission should allow you to continue to be a law enforcement officer in the state of Tennessee? I do. Like I said, I've changed in the past two and a half years. I've been through a lot. I've grown. I've matured. Um, I don't talk to that female anymore. I got a restraining order against her. I don't go out. I don't do social media. I've, I've changed just about everything in my life because of this. So you're making promises to the commission about future behavior, correct? That it'll be exemplary and live up to 
the standards that they expect of law enforcement officers. That's correct. And yet you made all those same promises and took all those same oaths back in 2017, and you barely lasted three years as a Tennessee Highway Patrol officer, which even Lieutenant Stilo said was pretty remarkable, um, a tenure that was pretty remarkable to be fired in that short of a time. That's correct. I have no more questions. Of the questions she asked. Oh, Your Honor. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Do any of the members of the commission have any questions uh, for this uh, person? Uh, uh, Uncle, do you have uh, anything you want to submit? Oh, Your Honor, like I said, I don't deny anything I've done. Um, everything they said was pretty pretty accurate. I don't deny any of it. We're at the uh, your closing arguments. Are you ready to begin? Part of the report that Captain Ray put together for you, which I would, and Sergeant Carter put together for you, uh, which if you have a moment, I'd ask for you to look through again, just to see the highlights of uh, Mr. Runkle's brief tenure, um, brief but remarkable tenure with the Department of, of Safety. Um, one of the things that they added there at, at the end in the memo from Captain Jimmy Johnson regarding the termination of Mr. Runkle for disciplinary reasons is they put forth the canon of law enforcement ethics that all troopers are expected to follow and that they agreed to follow. And one of the things that they agree to and that they are supposed to understand is that an officer who reflects upon this tradition, this tradition of law enforcement in the state of Tennessee will not degrade it. I would submit to you that the actions, the repeated actions of Mr. Runkle um, certainly degraded not just him, but degraded the entire department um, you heard the anger in Captain Ray's voice when he was questioning Mr. Runkle. It was well-deserved. And I would ask um, and point out, again, from the canon of ethics, that expressing disrespect to the law by an officer cannot but reflect upon the officer and the service, and they're talking about the service in general. For those reasons, I would ask that you revoke Mr. Runkle's post-certification. Thank you. Uncle, do you want closing statement? No, Your Honor, I don't have one. Prior to the deliberation, closed. Closed final. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think I do. Notice that uh, one of the orders uh, from the judge that was previously on the case uh, indicates a time frame that uh, those documents could be submitted. It's basically your suggestion of how uh, you think the commission should interpret its uh, the laws and rules that apply to post certification and how they should, uh, you know make those findings uh, of fact and apply that law to reach a conclusion. Uh, and you, you didn't make those documents, all right? No, sir, I don't believe so. Um, Do you wish to reconsider your closing statement? You can address that as part of your closing if you like. No, sir, I trust the commission's judgment. Let me hand it out. Give me that while uh, Commissioners, I want to have your attention, though. I'm going to uh, give you uh, some instructions on how you're to uh, uh, to look at not only this information, but everything that's uh, proceeded before your deliberations. So, Commission, you heard the uh, proof in the matter of Travis Runkle. Now, my duty to charge you about the law that you must follow in reaching your decision. 
you are the exclusive judges of the facts in this case. You're also uh, the exclusive judges of the law, specifically the statutes and rules and regulations applicable to this case. You should apply the law uh, to the facts in deciding the case under the directions of my charge. You exclusively have the authority to make findings of fact and to reach conclusions of law in this matter, and no one else can participate in those deliberations. However, if you find that you need to have the law or legal terminology explained, you, I can assist you with that. It has alleged that the respondent violated certain of the statutes and rules uh, applicable uh, to this commission's jurisdiction. It's burden to evidence those uh, actions to place. In case there are stipulations <laughs> entered into and one of them uncle has reported is that he doesn't deny basic facts that were alleged. Uh, <clears throat> limit your inquiry, however, the violation of the rules and statutes that were specifically alleged in the notice of charges. Evidence can documents, recordings, photographs uh, that were played as well as the testimony that uh, you know, has been uh, introduced uh, in the uh, course of this hearing. Uh, you may review any of the 11 exhibits in the course of your deliberation uh, and, uh, of course, any of the facts that have been stipulated to by the parties. The statements in the opening and closing arguments, however, are not evidence. Uh, the documents that are in the technical record that uh, were not uh, made exhibits are not evidence. The proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law are not evidence. Uh, those uh, you may use as a guide for your deliberation, but it is uh, this body that makes the findings of fact uh, and conclusions of law. Your order will have uh, several components. Uh, it will uh, consist of uh, those findings of fact, the conclusions of law, but also a policy statement uh, and your analysis of application statutes facts as you find them. Questions that somebody has about how to proceed? Before you final order, members of the board, you have the proposed final order in front of you. In the first paragraph, do you see any additions or corrections in the proposed final order? Moving on, and if uh, uh, Miss Cooper, I know every time we do one of these, I always have a little uh, skip some procedure in this, but please bear with us, Your Honor. Um, if you move on under the uh, parties and the in the uh, 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 respondents uh, one and two, is there any additions or corrections that need that any of the commissioners see uh, in that? I'm just caution you to also ask for any discussion. Yes, sir. The break. Moving on to findings of fact, looking at findings of fact numbers three and four, is there any discussion or changes or conclusions that need to be done in what you see uh, in sentences three and four? Hearing none. 
hearing none, moving on to sentence five, paragraph five. Any additions, corrections, discussions are all inclusive on that. You're recognized. Commissioner Wright, for the purposes of discussion and the deliberations part, uh, it seems pretty overwhelming the amount of evidence and stuff that was presented against Mr. Runkle. How how this sheds a bad light on law enforcement for sure, and I and I I don't see where there would be any department that would even give Mr. Runkle on the background. Duly understood, and and, um, and and for the points of that, if we we want to discuss that at more, I'm just looking at getting through to see if there's any additions additions or corrections in the findings of facts and more discussion. Duly noted. Uh, any additions or corrections to number five? Hearing none, moving on to number six and findings of fact as we read through it and open for discussion. And I will uh, advise you to go on and look at sentences seven and eight. And you've read those and you don't see if you need any discussion, please uh, indicate to do so. If not, I will entertain a motion uh, as the board switches on the findings of fact in this sure. order. Yes. Based on his admission that there is no dispute on these findings, I would make a motion to accept. Yes, sir, are you uh, making a motion to accept as, 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 written. Sta as written in yes, the sir. order? Yes, sir. I have a motion to accept as written. Do I hear a second? Second, Commissioner Beverly. I have Commissioner Beverly uh, uh, as a second. Any discussion on the motion? Just just one point. You're recognized, General Cherry. Um, on 8th, uh, it says on February 6th, the response appointment was terminated. I, I had in my notes that he was terminated on January 26th. I might, that might be an error in my notes, but perhaps we just need to clarify that. On the older Ms. Cooper on sentence number eight and findings of fact, we have on February 6, 2021, respondents employment with the THP was terminated. You may uh, refer to the uh, exhibits. Uh, you may not. Understand. Is, is, this, is, any count, is anybody see in there that this date is incorrect? Commissioner Wagner, I remember um, the document was signed. January 26th. We need to make a um, correction in number eight and change from February 6th to 26th. We do, and I would make that motion. All right. January 26th. January 26th. January 26th. January 26th. Did, Mr. Green, did you make the initial motion? I did, and I and when you're going to amend your amendment. motion, I did. All right, amending number eight from uh, February to January 26, 2021. Uh, Mr. Beverly, do you renew your second? Yes, sir, I do. With that, any other discussion on the motion? Findings of fact. Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to conclusions of law. Sentence is one. Is there any additions, corrections, or discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion. Have a motion to accept as written. Do I hear a second? second? Commissioner Jackson, second. Any discussion on conclusions of law? Hearing none, all in favor of the conclusions of the law and the motion, indicate saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Moving on to judgment. Sentence one, respondent certification 
and this order is stating is revoked. Is there a motion to accept or deny the judgment in said order? Commissioner Beverly, motion to accept. I have a motion to accept. They're here second. Commissioner Wright, second. Any discussion on the motion? If, Hearing, I, if I may have uh, one, you're recognized, Jim Cherry. Jim Cherry here. Um, just uh, to, to make it clear for the record, I, I'm just thinking it'd be appropriate to discuss this a little bit before we actually vote on this. Um, I think it's pretty clear what uh, what, what the, the misconduct was in this case. It's been documented, and uh, um, the officer has admitted his his wrongdoing. And uh, to give him a little bit of credit, he has exhibited some some personal courage to come and and uh, be essentially judged by by this commission. And uh, I, I would. Uh, commend him for for that courage and, and his willingness to to admit his mistakes and to take responsibility um, at the same time I think uh, I think the, w without even before the vote I think the Commission I think we were all in agreement that this is the kind of conduct that we simply cannot tolerate in law enforcement community in spite of uh, the uh, respondents efforts to correct his behavior over the past a uh, couple of years, um, and uh, and with that, just recognizing and commending the respondent for his courage. Uh, at the same time, I think there's really no action that would be appropriate except to revoke his certification in this case. Thank you, General Chair. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Judgment will stand as going. Policy statement, uh, sentences one and two. Any, I'll entertain a motion to accept the policy statement. I think we move forward and we vote on those as well. Have a motion from uh, Commissioner Green. Accept as written to hear second. Second that. Have a second that from General Cherry. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the policy statement indicate saying aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Reconsideration, stay in review of the final order. It's, there's a notice. And sometimes we have, I believe, it's all fair and I believe that concludes our deliberation. I will now turn that back over to uh, our administrative judge. Susan, this you heard the deliberations and the uh, decision by the commission. This will be reduced to writing. You'll be uh, you'll be provided a copy. The notice that I mentioned or the uh, appeal and reconsideration rights that are part of the statute that you'll have uh, your, your time to set notice and then exercise any rights if you choose. Any questions? No, Your Honor. No, sir. This uh, hearing is.